Hey, it's Jared, and today we're going to talk about seven things you need to know about the new DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Now, I have my Part 107 license, I do commercial drone work, and I also fly for fun and for this YouTube channel. So when I first heard of the three, which is this model right here. This isn't the classic. This is the three and it is the Cine edition. I was super excited because of the bigger sensor and the possibilities with that drone. But the telephoto camera on it left me wishing that I still had my Inspire 2. But when the three Pro came out, I was super excited because, hey, it has two additional cameras. And so it has three cameras and there's a medium telephoto and a telephoto and it's going to be amazing. The first thing that we're going to talk about in this video is the three different cameras and how they're not all the same and so you can't expect them to be the same. Now we learned that quickly with this model of the DJI Mavic 3. It has two different cameras. One of them is really good. It's the four thirds CMOS and then the other one is this little rinky dink smartphone sensor essentially and it was great to have it but it wasn't super useful because the image quality wasn't that good. Now here with the Mavic 3 Pro supposedly having three cameras on it we have a similar scenario there. There. The ultra wide or the wide angle, more traditional wide view drone camera is that four thirds CMOS. It's a 20 megapixel camera, which is what we've been used to. And it has a 24 millimeter lens. Now it has an aperture range of F 2.8 to F 11, which is great. F 2.8 lets you let more light in on the sensor. So you don't have to boost your ISO and it allows for a shallower depth of field. And then you can go down to that F 11, which allows you to change the exposure of your image, increase the depth of field a little bit. And it gives you a little bit of range to play with without having to put filters on the front of the camera camera. So that's great. That's the main camera and that's the best camera that's on this drone. If we go to the medium telephoto camera, we have a 70 millimeter lens and we also have a one over one third inch CMOS with up to 48 megapixel capture. It's actually a 12 megapixel camera, but it has that binning technology that allows it to boost up to 48 megapixels. So you can get a pretty high resolution image out of that, but it's nowhere near what you would get out of the four thirds CMOS as far as image quality. It definitely is lower image quality, but I do feel like that is an improvement over what we've seen in this secondary camera on the Mavic 3. So the medium telephoto, while not nearly as great as the wide, it also doesn't have an aperture that's adjustable at all. It's a fixed f2.8 aperture. It's not the end of the world. I felt like that camera produced great looking images and I'm not mad about that camera. Yes, I wish it was a four thirds CMOS like the main camera, but it's not. So let's talk about the telephoto camera. That's the third camera, the one that has 166 millimeter lens on it that lets you get in super close. It's the 7X option on your RC, and that's great. But it has an even smaller sensor at a half inch CMOS sensor with 12 megapixels max. And that's where the frustration lies is in the fact that if you want to use telephoto, you're going to get a very small image, 12 megapixels, which means you're not going to be able to blow this up and make a very high resolution image out of it. It's essentially taking a 4K equivalent photo, which is okay for most things, but not that great if you're actually wanting to blow that image up or print it very large. 4K or 12 megapixels, pretty small and very equivalent to what we're used to seeing with smartphones. On top of that, it has a fixed aperture as well, and that fixed aperture is at f3.4, which is lower than the other two cameras. That also means that the 7X camera is not going to perform as well in low light. Now, with all that to say, I was more impressed with the 7X or the telephoto on the 3 Pro than I am with the 3. You could definitely tell a quality difference between these two. Even though it doesn't seem like maybe the camera is any different, the lens setup and the way that it's uh, configured and perhaps there's even changes to the software, but the telephoto on the 3 Pro produces much better video and photo quality than on the 3. So I'm, I'm okay with that, but I do wish that for the money we were getting better sensors. The second thing to know is that the 3 Pro has an expanded ISO, which means that it's going to see better in night. It has a night mode that has an expanded ISO of up to 12,800. Now, I don't agree with actually using 12,800 
800 because you're going to get some probably pretty grainy and unusable images, especially with video. But the fact that you can boost the ISO that high is great because if there is a situation where you need to see more in the dark, you're going to get closer with that ISO of 12,800 than you would with the 6,400 that this drone and most earlier drones topped out at. So it's great that there's a night mode, although it's not a perfect solution. These small sensors could only boost so high before they start to fall apart. And I still wouldn't use anything over 3,200. But knowing that I have 12,800 just in case is a nice plus. The third thing to know about this drone is the telephoto doesn't stop at 7x. If you need to zoom in even further, you can zoom in digitally up to 28x, which is absolutely fantastic. That means if you need to get close to something, you can. Now, digital zoom is not very good most of the time. It falls apart. You might be able to zoom in a little bit, maybe from like 7 x to 8 or 9x and still have a good usable image but you get too far beyond that and it really just starts stretching out pixels and things don't look that good but i like the fact that it's there if i needed to get in close on something and i wanted to maintain resolution i could do that with this drone having up to 28x zoom is absolutely fantastic so 28x zoom while nice to have i wouldn't use it very often because i know that that image is going to fall apart but it's a great backup solution just like having that boosted 12,800 ISO. Now, the fourth thing to know about the Pro model is that it only supports micro SD cards up to 512 gigabytes, which is kind of confusing to me. This older model here supports one terabyte micro SD cards. So I could run a one terabyte micro SD card in my Mavic 3, even though this is the Cine that has a terabyte of internal storage. If it wasn't, or if I was using the 3 Classic, I could put a one terabyte micro SD card in there. Whereas on the Pro, that tops out at 512, which is kind of a bummer. But this is the Cine model as well, and it has the one terabyte of internal. I think what DJI is trying to do is say, if you need more storage on board than 512, you need to go with the Cine. And to be completely honest, you'd have to record for an awfully long time to get 512 gigs on a micro SD card in one of these drones. You can't record ProRes to the micro SD card as far as I've been able to figure it out. So in H.264, 265, or even shooting raw images, you'd have to shoot a ton of stuff, go through multiple, multiple batteries before you'd even get close to filling up that 512 gig SD card. So while it's a bummer, you can't put a terabyte in there. It's not really the end of the world, but I do feel like they're going backwards and you're getting less considering this is a pro level model. Speaking of less, the fifth thing you should know about this drone is that it has a shorter flight time than the other models. The other models are a little bit lighter, which is the sixth thing you should know. And because they're lighter, they have a little bit longer of a flight time. Because the camera module is so massive on the front of this drone and everything that I've been able to tell so far about the rest of the drone is pretty much the same, like the motors and the battery and all of that stuff. Because the Pro is a little bit heavier, you get a little bit shorter flight time. And of course, it is a little bit heavier of a drone because of the gimbal camera cluster on the front end of the drone. Now, the seventh and final thing to know about the Pro is that it comes with a different charger. This is a 100 watt charger with dual USB-C outputs on it that allow you to charge your batteries faster. If you're charging your drone batteries on the charging hub, for example, or perhaps also charging your RC at the same time on one charging brick, the 65 watt brick that comes with the other drones charges just a bit slower than what you're going to get out of this 100 watt. This 100 watt brick is going to deliver more power to the batteries and also allow you to top off your RC much quicker. And being that it's a pro model, I would expect that to be able to charge it faster and get it back in the air. So it's nice that it came with that 100 watt charger. So those are the seven things that you should know about the Pro. There aren't a whole lot of differences, but considering it's about the same price or it's still being advertised at around the same price as the three here, I highly recommend the Pro over the three. And if you don't need any of these Pro features, then I would just go with the Classic because the Classic is a great drone as well, having essentially the same wide angle camera. So just like with cell phones, the DJI Mavic 3 line has three options with one, two, or three cameras 
cameras, and the price points are all over the place, the specs are all over the place, and it really is confusing to figure out which one to get. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm going to be putting out more content, including comparisons between these two drones, and also some tips on flying the Mavic 3 Pro as well. And also check out some of my other drone videos, for example, how to make money with your drone, and uh, an upcoming course that I'm working on that teaches you how to get into drone photo and video commercially. So you'll definitely want to check out the links in the description below to check out the drones. Clicking on those links to go to Amazon or B&H helps support the channel, so I appreciate that. If you want to be notified when I put out new videos, make sure you're subscribed, and if this one was useful, give it a thumbs up. Any questions that you have, down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and we'll see you back in the next one.